Hello everybody, this is Hammer Striker here. Today I've got a Springfield 1911. This one is chambered in 9mm. It's a range officer, uh, but it's also marked 1911A1. You can see the range officer designation along with the cross cannon logo that Springfield Armory has. A local viewer lent us this. He's actually only had it a couple weeks. He's only had it out to the range a couple times. And we met it with the range, got some range time in with it, and really enjoyed shooting it. He let us borrow it so we could do a video on it. And we're going to do two things with it. We're going to do this video today talking about the gun itself. And then I'm going to compare it to another 1911 chambered in 45 and show you how similar they are. Because you might have a lot of purists that think if it's 9mm it's not a real 1911. This is a real 1911 in every way. It's a 70 series. We'll do the comparison in another video. But this is actually as close to a 1911-45 as you can get without a few differences to accommodate the caliber. So let's start out. I'll show you that it's unloaded. And we'll continue on from there. So we do have an unloaded gun. It comes with two magazines. They do hold nine rounds each. And one thing that's kind of interesting, I've got one loaded with snap caps that we'll be using later to demonstrate the trigger. There's a little ridge at the back of the magazine. It'll be a little difficult to see. You might be able to get get in there and see it. There's a little lit, ridge at the back of the magazine. There you can see it. We'll put the flashlight on it. And it holds the round in position. These magazines are actually the same size as a 45 uh, 1911 magazine. Of course, the feed lips are different and a few other things. But they'll fit in the magwell. The, ma the magazines will interchange in the magwell. And they use that little ridge to get the round where it needs to be. So I'll set that aside. Talking about the gun itself, it's all stainless steel. It has a 5 inch stainless steel match grade uh, fully supported ramp barrel. So it is a very nice barrel in the gun. The gun is 8.6 inches long and 5.5 inches tall and it weighs 41 ounces according to Springfield's site. We weighed it, it came in at 40.8 so they probably just rounded up to 41 ounces. So it's not a light gun, it's right, in, it's right consistent with all the other 1911s out there. It comes with these Coca Bolo grips with a really nice checkering on them. They're real comfortable grips, real easy to hold. The front side is smooth, but the mainspring housing is very checkered. It's a little bit of an aggressive checkering, but it's smooth enough that it doesn't bite into your hand or hurt you. And there is a little bit of a hump on the grip safety, you can see it right there which ensures when you get a hold of it that it's fully disengaged. Now typically I don't like these. They bite into the meaty part of my thumb when I when my thumb my hand wraps around the grip and they annoy me. In the 9mm I didn't notice that with the lowered recoil. It, it just didn't really seem to bite into me. It didn't seem to annoy me like uh, they typically do. And this was actually very comfortable to hold and very comfortable to shoot. Now from a recoil perspective, the recoil was almost non-existent you could actually feel the reciprocating mass of the slide more than you could actually feel the round going off. So it was really easy to shoot this thing get quick follow-up shots. The sights on this are dovetailed. You can see front and rear are dovetailed. The rear sight is an adjustable target sight and it's there's your elevation adjustment and right over here is the windage adjustment and you'll see on the other side of the gun, of course, it's the safety is only on one side. It's a very clean look, very nice and smooth. And one thing you'll notice on the Springfield Armory, and there may be other manufacturers that do this, the ejection port is lowered and flared. You can see the flare at the back. Normally on a 1911, it would kind of come across right about there. And what that does is it, it helps reliable ejection when you have varying power uh, ammo, especially if you have lighter powered ammo. He was feeding this thing brass, uh, then we fed it Perfecta, and then we fed it some, we fed it some Blazer brass, <clears throat> and it worked perfectly reliably with all three types of ammo. And it, it, overall, it was proved to be a reliable gun. I think he even threw a couple of magazines of uh, Champion aluminum, you know, Federal aluminum in there, and it ate that up without any problem at all. So overall, it was a reliable gun. Stepping back to the sights for a second, the front sight is a fiber optic. And normally I don't like these blackout target rear sights, but on this one there's enough of an air gap, you can see there, there's enough of, I'll put my hand there to make it a little easier to see. There's enough of an air gap on either side of it that you could actually use the target to fill in that gap and still be able to see it. 
So I was actually able to acquire my target relatively quickly with this and pull some very nice groups as you'll see from the video. So it's really easy to get nice groups with the gun. From a safety perspective, of course it has the thumb safety. And it's really easy and positive. So it clicks nicely, nice and solid, but it's not difficult. So it's very easy to just you know drag your thumb down and disengage it. And of course on a 1911 you can only engage the safety when the hammer is back. And as I mentioned, the safety is only on the one side, which is typical for a 1911. This is a 70 series or a classic GI style, so it doesn't have any of the uh, firing pin safeties internal. So it's just your classic 1911 as pretty close to as it was originally designed. The trigger on this thing is drilled, and that really is mostly a cosmetic feature. It really doesn't have a significant impact on the overall function of the trigger. Since this gun doesn't belong to us, I'm going to load it up with some of these snap caps for dry fire as we don't dry fire other people's guns. And one thing also I'll note while I've got it right here, you'll see there's a little hole in the trigger. There's a set screw back in here, right there. It's kind of, you can see that black set screw. And you can adjust the over travel stop right there. So it does have an adjustable over travel stop on the trigger. So I've got it loaded with snap caps, got the hammer back. There's almost no take up, just imperceptible amount of take up. And then a very short, very crisp light break, which is characteristic of a 1911. Reset is very short, and you're right back on the wall. And then another very short, crisp break. So it's got a really nice trigger, which you would expect from a, a 1911, especially the earlier series without the extra mechanics of having to disengage an internal firing pin safety. So overall, it was easy to get nice quick follow-up shots and very easy to stay on target throughout the entire trigger pull. Just a total pleasure to shoot. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to take the thing apart, show you some of the internals. Get rid of that snap cap. Of course, we want to make sure that it's clear since on a 1911, we are going to be looking right at the business end as we work our way through the disassembly. So I'm going to put it up on its end. And I'm just going to kind of quickly go through the disassembly since we're not actually doing a uh, cleaning video or anything on this. Slide it back, line up the pin. And slide it apart. And we'll start with the frame or the slide first, and then we'll move and talk about the frame a little bit. It's got a standard GI style guide rod. Now the spring has got a few more turns and it's lighter because it is 9mm versus 45. The barrel itself is stainless steel. It's very solid. They note this as being a match grade barrel with a fully supported ramp. And you can see it's also a very polished ramp. So here's the ramp right here. And it goes all the way down. So there's very little, when I show you the frame, you'll see there's very little mating part of the ramp in the frame. The majority of the ramp's actually attached to the barrel itself. And this is basically the same size blank as a 45 ACP barrel, just with a smaller hole drilled in it. So this barrel is actually a little bit heavier than a 45 barrel because there's more metal in it. And it's got, of course, the same lug that a standard 1911 barrel would have. Now looking at the slide, very smooth inside, of course no mechanisms for a firing pin safety. Very smooth, well machined. One thing I didn't know when I had the gun together is there is a you know, texture here, like a brushed stainless texture, and also on the top. So you're going to minimize glare from light hitting it. And that texture is in the serrations as well as on the top, and of course here at the front. So it's a very stylish, very nice looking gun. Very clean, not, not, on a 1911 there's really not a whole lot going on in the slide, which is typical of the 1911s. Now let's look at the frame. Frame's also quite simple, full length rails, both sides. Now there's a bit of a cutout here, and typically on a 45 there'd be more of a bridge in here and you'd see more of the feed ramp still in the frame. The and this one here, there's very little feed ramp at the bottom, and this is more cut down, which of course allows room for the barrel and the, and the feed ramp to sit down in there. Uh, and of course, this is a stainless steel frame. 
the whole gun is, you know, all the metal on the gun is all stainless steel. And you've got the hammer here. So it's very, it was very well manufactured. I didn't find any burrs or any other, you know, machining issues inside the gun. It was all very clean. So let's go ahead and get it put back together. Overall, this has just been a pleasure to, to shoot. It's been a pleasure to have the have this gun in our possession for a little bit and be able to review it. If you're looking for a 1911, uh, but either the 45, the price, or the recoil is a bit much for you, this would be a really good choice. With the 9mm, anybody can handle it, you know, almost no recoil. 9mm is inexpensive, and you get the beauty and the function of a 1911 without necessarily having to deal with the characteristics of the 45 ACP. And also watch for our upcoming video. We're going to compare the 9mm 1911 architecture to a 45 9mm or 45 1911 architecture. Too many numbers to say. And show you just kind of how they're, how they're the same and the few things that are actually different. Otherwise, if you like our videos, please give us a thumbs up, share, subscribe, and have a great day. Thank you.